My Synology NAS has been running great for around six years. However, a power outage changed all that. My NAS entered read-only mode and was no longer functioning normally. In this video, I'll explain what happened, a few things I could have done differently to avoid the issue, and how Synology came to the rescue. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. One night, very recently, there was a bad thunderstorm, and the power cut off for over an hour. Fortunately, my Synology DS918 Plus was on a UPS battery backup. However, there was a problem that was self-induced. Earlier this year, I had upgraded the NAS to include the 5Bay DX517 expansion, providing a total drive capacity of 9 drives. One single mistake would cause me a bit of grief, and I want to share that mistake so it doesn't happen to you. When I entered the room, the DS918 Plus was beeping frequently. I went into the Synology Disk Station Manager, or better known as the DSM, and my heart sunk. In an effort to protect further corruption, the server entered read-only mode. This was caused by unexpected file system errors. While I did have a backup of most of the important data, I'm sure there were some that needed to be transferred. I turned off the beeping within DSM, and I also noticed all the drives were reporting a healthy state. If there was any disk corruption, I would think some errors should show up on at least one of the drives, but there were none. So what caused this issue? I have the server set to automatically shut down during a power outage, and I double checked by going into the control panel, then hardware and power, then the UPS tab. UPS support is enabled and set for a standby mode after 15 minutes, which will automatically shut down after 15 minutes. If I check the device information, it should provide up to 46 minutes of battery backup before that happens. The first thing I did is to take a closer look at the suggestion, and it states to log into your Synology account and submit a ticket to Synology Technical Support. I did this immediately and uploaded the logs that were requested. In the meantime, I began making sure I had backups of all my important data. Pictures, videos, stuff like that, which I could do over a Samba share, but I couldn't get my external drive to work properly directly connected to the DSM, which would have been much faster. The very next morning, I received a reply from Synology, basically stating that file system errors like this are most often caused by an abrupt power loss while the device was performing a critical operation and recommended copying off the data to external storage. Well, I had already started that, so I was already on the right track. Once that's done, then remove and recreate the volume and move the data back. Obviously, a very time-consuming task when you have 29 terabytes of data or more. Fortunately, another day had passed, and I received a second reply from Synology support. This one was far more encouraging. The support technician indicated that he had spoken with a colleague, and it seems likely that the BTRFS errors that were being reported are actually a false positive and caused by the DX517 expansion unit failing during operation. The recommended solution was twofold. First, verify all the connections are good, and then attempt to convert to read-write to see if any issues reoccur. Secondly, I have been putting off updating the DSM software itself for quite some time, and it severely needed to be updated. After converting to read-write, I found many applications that showed they needed repairing, and some wouldn't repair at all. This was until I updated to the latest version of DSM. After doing that, the DS918 Plus rebooted, and I was able to repair the few remaining applications that needed it. But going back to the first support response, what could have caused the power issue in the first place? Well, as it would have it, it was 100% my mistake. I had plugged in the power to the expansion unit into a surge-only outlet, not a port that was powered. An obvious blunder on my part, and lesson learned. Make sure if you use any expansion units on your Synology NAS, that the NAS and the expansion unit are on a powered outlet. If not, safely shut down the NAS and move them to one that is. The second, and probably the most important aspect, is to keep your DSM software up to date. 
My reasons for not upgrading was that everything's been running fine for the past six years. There is no rush. The reality is, those updates are provided for a reason, and keeping the software updated might have prevented much of the problems I experienced. If you encounter a situation where your Synology NAS enters read-only mode, the first thing you'll want to do is create a support ticket with Synology. Their customer support was fantastic, and the first time I've needed to use it in six years. The fact that a follow-up message was sent indicating this was a false positive saved countless hours in rebuilding the volume and transferring data back to the NAS. I have no other affiliation with Synology other than being a long-term customer. I've learned some valuable lessons, and I hope someone else finds it helpful. The next time I see a DSM update, it won't go ignored. And having both the DS918 Plus and the DX517 on a powered outlet should keep the server running well for years to come. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video informative, please let me know by clicking the like button. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, I appreciate your support of the channel by subscribing. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.